The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to my brother, my brother, me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. We just we just forced our editor to cut out three minutes of us talking about Tara House before we could start the program. <laughs> it is a, it's an epidemic, folks. Boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, oh, boom, shit. boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, Guys, we've got a brand new watch, and I can't stress enough how legitimate this watch is, and I'm very excited about it. Yesterday, news went out, DuckTales reboot cast, have you seen it? Griffin, are you losing your mind about this DuckTales cast? It's an insane DuckTales cast, but I, I, have, a, I, have, a, I have a problem with making this a watch, boys. Why? I don't think I don't think it, the 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 small screen can be a watch. I think only a watch. If it was passengers' watch, if it was Star War, there's a new Star War. That's a then no, that's a big blockbuster Beck watch. Bennett, Bobby Moynihan, Danny Pudi, Ben Schwartz, David Tennant. Are you kidding me with this? David I think, I think it's Pudi because Danny Putty is <laughs> Danny, the, the fun new holiday if, toy. You put it on the newspaper. And, yeah, Danny Pudi. <laughs> Um, no, it's 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 hot. It's hot as hell. Is it a watch though? Because then another problem I have with it is it's not here yet. I can't watch it. Okay, well, we're how about we're watching the horizon? We're scoping. This is a oh. scope. Then it's this- a then it's a scope. I, if we're doing a watch, then I'm sorry, but it has to be Trolls is on DVD now. Probably, it? May, no, it might not. be. It's still in okay. theaters. Here's what I want to ask you guys. They put out the cast list, right? Yeah, it's, okay. it's pretty like. They revealed a lot here, but there's still some major characters that they haven't announced the casting for, and I want to throw it to us to make that decision for them. Here's the characters that I didn't see on that list. One, the big one jumped right out to me, Magicka Dispel. Always trying to get that number one dime so she can cast magic with it. Two, okay. Gyro oh, gear loose. So we're just get, you're just gonna. Sorry, this isn't a segment where you want to make jokes about the actors and actresses that we think could fill these roles. You just want to sort of spout lore um, and show off how many Ducktales characters you know. Well, I mean, I do want to talk about, but yes, mostly I wanted to talk about. Also, I had this really great joke that you just stepped on, where I was going to talk about gyro gear loose, or it might be euro gear gear loose, and I wasn't sure how it's pronounced. It was really good. I've been oh, working so, on it for a week. God, I'm sorry That's to okay. step on that one. That's okay. Um, you know, they'll fix it in post. Um, but, okay, so, let's start with Magic of the Spell. Griffin, where are you at? Uh, I mean, Emily Blunt. Oh, I know she's good. busy, but not bi- too busy for DuckTales. If if David Tennant is in the mix, then if Beck Bennett, who I, is Beck Bennett still on SNL? Uh, yeah. He's, bu- he's busy, too. Get in there. Ooh, Kate McKinnon. Okay, yeah. I mean, any S- let's just make it an all SNL cast. Yeah. Uh, can I hit you guys with a uh, sick magic of the spell? And it's Miss Jessica Walter. Oh, oh God. shit. Yeah, from downtown. Okay. Shit, that's good, Justin. It's really good. Is this going to, are we going to get a revival of hot cartoons from my kid age? Are we going to get it? Are we going to get a tailspin starring Denzel Washington as Baloo? <laughs> That would be amazing. Reprising, reprising his character from Flight, with just replacing Baloo. Uh huh. He flies the plane upside down, drunk. I think I didn't see it. I saw the trailer, and I, I think he was drunk. <laughs> just screaming, it. "Wahoo!" I seen it. It was amazing. Here's uh, my question. Here's my question. Here's my question. Yeah, it's 2016. Yeah, 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 it will yeah, be Donald, 2017. Donald, Donald. That's what you're wondering. Well, Donald's a big one, but 2017, right, is when this is coming out. It's hitting, hitting shores. 2017. What takes it? What's what's taking him so long? Just you're just drawing funny pictures. Well, one you know? that, but two. What kind of dark, gritty elements do you think they're going to put in now that oh. weren't there in our childhood? Guns. Okay. His cane has got a poison tip. It is fatal. 
That's a new thing. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there will be like whole storylines about income inequality in Duckburg. Interesting. It will raise some troubling. It's a, it's a troubling like visual. I mean, once you realize he's absolutely one of the like point oh one percenters. Like yeah, he, right. prob- he probably he probably the series probably opens with him, with him getting picked for a cabinet position. I mean, mm-hmm. let's, be, <laughs> let's be honest. And I think the first episode we have to watch Launchpad McQuacks, um, or nope, sorry, Robo Ducks, um, Grizzly Surgery that turns him that replaces all of his fleshy duck parts with cyber cybernetic um stuff. So like I- the lung the lungs are gone. The duck lungs are gone. That weird spiral PP that's gone, He's and it make way for Robo parts. Mm-hmm. Now is all yeah. his organs they took out. Uh, I would like to pitch if you're listening to this Disney XD, um, and I know he's super busy. Listen, you can't find a busier man in in show business right now. But Fit and Crack Show, uh, aka Gizmo Duck, is Lin Manuel Miranda. Like that would be amazing casting. That'd be really good. Please make yeah, that because, happen. And he could really sell this the duck screams as because he's awake during the robo surgery. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't know why they make us look at this, and I don't know why it's a children's cartoon. Uh, if I could just put it in my hat here for Donald, because I feel like, like um, my Donald is so nightmare inducing as mm-hmm. I've tried to like replicate it for our child. It's so bad that uh, my wife makes me do it on command just to make fun of me because she that much in this. Hey, break, break me in, off a break me I'm off a piece of that football cream. You guys gave me like a line, yeah. from Ducktales 2017 that he the dumb. My God, say. my God! There's duck guts everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like it sounds like a an. Interstellar transmission from the Cathrax, which is an alien species that's just sort of uh, based around violence. I'm going to leave you, boys. You, you might also be some kind of like the fly hybrid between Donald Duck and the fish from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah. Do you, think, do you think when you're trying to get your Donald, you have to sound like that for like 100 hours and then it just like gels? Like it just comes to you? Do you think that's I don't how know, it works? Bud. No, I think if you're you, born with it. I think either Maybe you've got it or you don't. Yeah, uh, and you you do you do. Congratulations, Justin. You baby, you got it. You got that sound I've been looking for. <laughs> Would you guys be interested in a new podcast called "Let Me Hear Your Donald"? And it's mm-hmm. just you talk to new parents or parents who've been in the game for a while. Any parents and just like let me hear your Donald real quick. Let me hear mm. the Donald you're working with. I mean, if the last year has taught me anything, it's that just we can do basically anything up here and people will listen to it. So Yeah. Yeah, too true. Do you want to hear uh, mine? Yeah, let's hear oh, your boy. Donald. Hello, I am Donald Duck. No, now, that's I know not what anything. You, now I know what, I know what you're thinking. That's not it, but here's what I'm planning. I'm going to read books uh, about Donald Duck to my child long before she ever sees him in oh, any I kind see. of moving I picture. See. And so then when she hears that, that person's doing it That's wrong. That's how Donald. So no no old Disney cartoons, no Kingdom Hearts. Not not, not until she's like five or six. You know what I mean? Hey, I, I put myself out there, actually. Can, real quick, mm. can I just hear, um, uh, I'm going to leave you boys with uh, uh, Uncle Scrooge in your best Donald and not a joke but like right now, cold. Give it your best <laughs> oh, to try no. to make that classic Donald. I've got, I've got some we all sinus have a lot of fun at my expense. Sure, mm-hmm. that'll make it perfect, even better. What a nice timbre that will lend to your performance. Okay, um, I'm gonna do my best. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Justin, could you do yours one more time as a reference for me? <laughs> this is what Donald is supposed to sound like. No. <laughs> No, you do yours right now, cold. I'm not stalling for you anymore. Make the sound of Donald with your mouth. <laughs> I can't. I got no. I'm going to leave you boys with Uncle Scrooge. Say it. No, I think I'm just doing Bobcat Goldblade. Yeah, Travis, I need you to do it for real and not don't that, laugh through it. This is, is serious. Okay. <laughs> don't fucking. Travis, stop <laughs> laughing. This is hey, a serious okay. moment. Donald. It doesn't help that Trees is looking at me in horror. Good. Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> Oh, God. It sounds like if Dobby got run over by a truck. <laughs> Travis, Listen, I've finish, never finish, even finish. practiced it before. Please. This is my first time. Travis, this is a, if this takes the rest of the episode, I do need you to finish the line read. Yes, yeah, What's properly. the rest of the I'm, line? I'm going to leave you boys with Uncle Scrooge. Okay. That's the line. 
Yes, Teresa, it sounds terrible. I know. It sounds like, it sounds like yes, smudge. honey, I know it's bad. Sounds like Smudge from that Christian puppet show we used to watch. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Now, Griffin, you do yours. Yeah, Griffin, let's hear your on fire. Let me hear your Donald real quick. That's pretty good. I didn't enunciate very good, but I did the sound. I mean, you did no words, but you had the sound there for sure. I if we could combine oh, Griffin's wow, and mine wow, in some wow. kind of weird overlay. <laughs> Is that close? Am I doing anything? Um, let's please anything, yeah. please. <laughs> Boy, that is a good. Ge- that's the best game since which one vapes. Um, uh, 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 okay. So questions from listeners. We take them, we answer them. That's how we do it. Uh, and here we go. I'm a big kombucha enthusiast. I've been r- riding this fermented freight train for about two months now. So my question is this: Is it appropriate to bring a bottle of kombucha to a restaurant if I know they don't have it available? Or is it a no outside food or drinks ordeal like at a movie theater? Please help me, brothers. The prospect of washing down a meal without a drink is daunting to me. So should I bring my beverage of choice or just suck it up and order a water there? And that's from Boochin in Bremerton, Washington. This Love is... the booch! Gotta have my booch! Who got the booch? Listen to me. Listen to me! Don't! Are you kidding me? I don't care if it's kombucha. I don't. First of all, I don't. I'm not entirely sure I know what kombucha is. It's like a fermented tea. Yuck! It's like mildly, uh, like very, very slightly alcoholic. Right? Like one oh, well, percent. Hello. Hmm. Um. No, you can't. You can't for so many reasons. First of all, you can't just bring stuff into a restaurant. You Correct. can't. There should. I'm going to invent a food detector, and they can also use it at the airport. Um, because you're not supposed to bring that through security either. But you walk through the, the 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 door of this Applebee's and you step through the food detector. And if you've got a secret bottle of booch, then you are shown the door again. Turn around. Now, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hold on, Griffin. I want to stop you there because I feel like you're missing an opportunity there. Because I like this idea of bringing something in only because the restaurant doesn't serve it. So, like, if you get there and, you're, and they're like, "What would you like for dessert?" and you're like, "You know what I could really go for? Slice of chocolate cake." And they're like, "I don't have. We don't have chocolate cake. I'm sorry." And you go, mm, I'm "Gonna have to go off menu." And you just like dive into your tote bag and pull out a slice of chocolate cake. You know it's what I mean? Like you. Get- <laughs> it's a very, it's a very new interpretation of the term off menu. Well, you gave them the chance. Like you offered them the opportunity to offer you chocolate cake, and they didn't have it. This is no. Travis, you're joking, right? This is a yes, joke. Yes, of course, of, of, okay, of course I am joking. Okay, for fuck's sake. I mean, you really scared me there for a second. Because this person's, not, I'm pretty sure they're not joking. I think they want to bring their their stink tea into this Applebee's and then be like, sorry, you didn't have stink tea. No, of course they didn't have stink tea. I can't go to a fucking sushi restaurant and be like, hot dog, please. And they're like, no hot dogs. Like, <laughs> there is hot dogs. Singular. There is hot dogs. There's hot dog. There is. Do you like okay. do you like do you like hot dogs? What, how about these hot dogs? <laughs> there is precedent for this though, a little bit, in a, in a in a practice that has always creeped me out, and that is there are restaurants that are BYOB. Like they this don't. This is not have, that. This is not but, this point. But it is. Travis, but it yes. is. But kombucha is alcoholic. But this is it's, 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 Applebee's isn't BYOB. If you bring a fucking six or a Bud Light lime into Applebee's, you will be arrested by the cops. This is, is this true. is this is this you can't you can't just bring stuff into a restaurant because they don't have it because there's a reason they don't have it. They're trying to create a fucking atmosphere. They're trying to create a cohesive dining experience. Right. And Maybe if you bring if you bring a pair with the jalapeno uh boats. If you if you bring <laughs> your own like rice and s- sushi grade tuna into a fucking Chili's so you can make the maki rolls that you want. You can't fucking do that because it's a Chili's. They're a Southwestern fun Tex-Mex restaurant. You can't bring sushi in there. Griffin, what do you think about bringing your own food to like a hibachi restaurant 
so that the person starts cooking the food and you on the other side side of the table just start cooking food for them and you're flipping shrimps into each other's mouths and everything's just getting all higgledy piggledy. Or not even for them, but you just like, let me get the shrimp teppanyaki and then I'm gonna just lay this hamburger patty down on this corner of the grill. You're not gonna use this corner of the grill. <laughs> this is my corner of the grill. Uh, is it not BYO burger? Shit. Well... <laughs> I, I I think that I would sooner I actually think this is more socially appropriate at the movie theater. Like everybody's sneaking food. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah everybody right? knows and what's it's up. It's dark. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to judge you. I also think kombucha, no tea, no shit. Well, I guess actually yes, some tea. Um <laughs> you it's like a it's kind of a joke jokey thing to be like, "Oh, I brought my own I I brought my own kombucha." To drink, isn't it? Isn't that like a jo- like? It's like a bad Mad TV sketch, a little bit. Yeah, it's well, like, it's on, Portlandia. On the fucking... It's a Portlandia sketch. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that on that correct. fucking CBS show, that's like millennials are dumb shits. Um, that would be like one of the things that one of the characters did, and I'm not it saying did. it's a fair representation, but I am saying like it's maybe the uh, the optics, optically speaking, it's the worst possible drink to do this with. What if? Hmm. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. You get your kombucha out, pour it in a glass. A waiter comes by, give it the side give it the side eye, and he's like, Hey, where's that from? And you say, Another waiter brought it to me. A okay. different waiter. See, he's Todd like, Todd did have- this. Todd 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 <laughs> His name was Toddlin. And he came by and said, Do you need any drinks? And I asked for kombucha and he got me one. I don't think we serve kombucha. I, this, I may have gotten, it may be a new edition or I may have gotten the last one. I don't know, but Toddlin did bring it to me. He is an employed official waiter at the restaurant. You know him. You, you know, know Toddlin. Him. You know Toddlin, right? He you, brought this to me. You love Toddlin. What are you <laughs> talking about? This is good. You're like incepting Toddlin into like this guy. Like, you remember he was your best man. Mm-hmm. You, guys, you guys went on that five day walkabout together and it changed your life. Check your name tag. What's it say? And then it says Toddlin. And then he's like, whoa. Oh, shit. Whoa, you got me. Um, hey, do you boys want a Yahoo? I'd love that. This one is sent in by Nicholas Potter, who needs a, 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 a an honorific because he's crushing Nick of time. Nick of, no, that's awful. Um, you never we'll like any of my honorifics. Yeah, they're all pretty bad. It's from Yahoo Answers user Shame. Whoa. <laughs> Shame asks, would you rather live under the sea or mm-hmm. up in the sky? I've been on the land for a while, and it's pretty good, but we basically used it all up. <laughs> all, the, yeah. all, the, all the minerals, all the uh, animals down here. We're just like apparently I read uh, Newsweek sometimes, and apparently we're we're making a real mess of it. Yeah, it's a real stink of things. So this is a really I because I thought about this for a long time, and the Yahoo responses to this are almost evenly perfectly divided. So I want to put the question to you boys: under the sea, up in the sky. I'm going to ask you a question. It's probably obvious, but I I just want to clarify: in some sort of habitat, in both circumstances, right? Like I'm not yeah, like little mermaiding, a, just like swimming around. A cloud village, or a little coral kingdom. Okay, okay. So like <sighs> we're talking like Columbia or Sea Lab. You know what I mean? Or Rapture. Would I mean if you wanted to do both Bioshocks? Oh, okay, that yeah, too. that's probably the obvious one, huh? I think it would be a little bit more open air concept, than, but yeah, and also not very racist. Which mm-hmm. one can you? bail on the easiest when it goes full cult because it will go full cult interesting i feel like the sky kingdom would be easy to i mean you just have to get a you parachute, just walk right well you just walk far enough and you're not in the sky you're not kingdom there anymore. anymore right yeah. i mean oxygenation is going to be a problem in both of these environs that's well, certainly we'll say, not ideal i mean well it depends that? on it's how high you go world. justin what how high you go like yeah. you could maybe just be like thirty feet in the air. You're still Charles, in the air. If I if I climb to the top of a mountain, I've read uh back of the box. If I climb to the top of the mountain, I have to make cupcakes different and weird. Like mm-hmm. certainly, there's going to be some difference in pressure in this cloud kingdom. 
Alyssa, are you, wait, ha- now hold on, wait, wait, wait. Now, Travis, when you envisioned a Sky Kingdom, are you tell? I just need to clarify something. I want to circle back on something you said. When you envision a Sky Kingdom, are you mm-hmm. literally thinking of like something that's floating, th- just like no, there, I, like well, barely okay. floating above the ground? First of all, like, you look laugh. At me, but I'm the Lord of the Blue. Like, you're right there. You're gonna. Hit you're right building. there. I can grab your. I would sh- I can argue. Grab your sneaks. I would argue that the other one is way dumber because think of how harder, how much harder it would be to resupply and move things back They're and forth. If, if you, They're but both dumb. But if you're like thirty thousand feet in the air, if you're thirty feet in the air, a rope ladder is going to cover you. Yeah, for, and it, it, people can bring you down too, like instantly. Mm. Yes, I, my my bounce house castle full of helium might be a terrible idea. Now that I think about it, let me give you this this quandary up in the sky up in the sky it's obviously great right there's lots of clouds but that's about it isn't it there's like some birds i guess and stars at night and that's great down under the sea there's so many different like fish like beautiful fishies to look at and there's like caverns with like hidden gold Mm. that you could go swim around in and like play play in the in the underwater caverns you could go mm-hmm. and just like there's so many unexplored species you could go find a new species i just saw this fish and it's just made out of like it's just this ball of feathers it's super fucked up and i h- hate looking at it but if i was the one that discovered it i would be so psyched so i feel like there's so many opportunities for fun adventures under the sea up in the sky it's just like clouds and that's pretty much all you get but there's also griffin up in the clouds very little chance that you run into something giant and terrifying oh you mean like, like a fucking air plane travis no i mean like a giant squid or like perhaps the first discovered sea monster you know what i mean like the the ocean is huge and very dense and full of shit and we don't know what that shit is in the sky i'm pretty sure there ain't dragons you know what i mean like i'm pretty confident there aren't dragons but if scientists come out tomorrow and they're like yeah turns out sea monsters totally real i would not be surprised yeah not yeah. A, not a shock they probably would have a better name for it i, th- I don't think scientists normally classify things as monsters i think i would say i don't know have you seen the show river monsters it's not science i would say i've been thinking about it and i think i'll go with sky just because i don't want to get all pruney sure but you're in a habitat so you're fine i'd go swimming last night this is a sidebar to related to scuba and underwater activities last night i was trolling apple tv for something to watch to turn on the smithsonian channel and I, there is a special there about this amazing place for diving, and it is in Roatan, which was an island that I lived on for a month, uh, and didn't do it. I didn't dive there. And as soon as I start watching the spe- the special, I'm literally like overwhelmed by the beauty, the incredible reef beauty. Of Roatan that I did not experience. Worse, I have a very clear memory of someone inviting me to partake in scuba there. And that night, I heard there were hermit crab races and kind of wanted to check that out. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm literally watching this, this film where every, like, there's like, Old dude upon old dude's like, it's the most amazing scuba on the planet. People come from all over. It's a pilgrimage. You have to do it at least once. It's like, I did it. I did do it once. And I did go ahead and check out the hermit crab races <laughs> instead of getting into the scuba. How uh, were the action. How were the fucking hermit crab races, though? Pretty, ex- pretty thrilling. They were fucking great. And I, I bet and I picked the winning one. I got a certificate. And everything and help charity. It was like fantastic. So I did like I had a I had a a a, 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 a great cocktail, um, and just had a great time. A, a sort of a banana coconut thing, if memory serves. Uh, Monkey Lala was the name of it. It was a great cocktail that I had, and it was a fun night. I didn't see like the most amazing untouched pristine reefs on the, in the hemisphere, but yeah. I, I I did get to see those little sons of bitches scoot around. In that's fun Higgledy though Piggledy. it's fun i mean it's fun i it was I, fun. I did feel like i wasted a bit of an opportunity that was very i sad. would I very pay sad. so much money to see justin sit down with these old dudes from this documentary about this scuba and have justin attempt to justify to them why the why hermit crab so races great. for charities was like <laughs> well but you guys also missed some pretty cool shit 
They, I feel like I should have gotten equal time in the documentary. <laughs> like, sure, sure, boys. That mm-hmm. all sounds great if you want to get wet. How about this? <laughs> get yourself a nice monkey lala, head over to the Blue Bahia, and let's see some hermit crab races. Did you guys together. get a certificate? Bam. Yeah, did you, How you like charity? them apples? Did you have to see any eels down there? Well, yeah, we saw a couple of eels. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No thanks. Keep them. Ocean I wieners? I watched the whole thing, and that's probably the saddest thing I've ever done in my life. Probably the saddest thing is watch a documentary about an amazing place. I'll never go again, but I did go once and just kind of kicked it and watched uh, Star Wars on TV <laughs> and uh, got on the internet and stuff. I got I had a I had a boat I went out on like like a little paddle boat I guess I did experience that didn't get like in it. deep yeah didn't get in it went to the crab race you saw the tops of the coral and that's the best part for me <laughs> that's the nip that's the nipples mm-hmm that's what they're called uh my dad has found himself in a bit of a jam he hosted a company party with some coworkers at our house last weekend. One of the coworkers is vegan and brought over a tin of these brown cookie biscuit things shaped and decorated like little squirrels. When she gave them to my dad, she referred to them as squirrel biscuits. My dad replied some of the effect of, oh, Violet, our dog loves squirrels. To which she replied, well, I'm sure she'll love these too. The problem is we have no idea whether these squirrel biscuits are actually meant for people or dogs. The coworker did not spe- specifically mention that there were either, and a cursory taste doesn't disprove either possibility. Oh, how do- how does one ask a vegan coworker if their cookies are meant for animals or people without offending her or making a fool of ourselves? And that's from Biscuit Bamboozled in Brooklyn. Holy shit! I I just like Holy shit. I don't want to shut this question down, but generally speaking, when when dealing with foodstuffs. If a cursory taste test doesn't clear up whether it is food for humans or for dogs, then it is for a garbage can. I, if that is, if it's, if there is still a gray, mm, I don't know if this is human food or dog food. Well, there's a place for there's a place for this. The I toilet or garbage can. Listen, I mean, I hate dog, to break right? it to you guys. I hate to break it to you guys, but from working at Petsmart, there are lots of like dog biscuit cookies that are like the ingredients are like peanut butter, flour eggs and it's like wait hold on who is this for and it's like it's completely the same stuff that's the thing is that like human food and dog food there's only certain things that they can't eat so there is like a a whole menu of like dog cookies that are basically the same ingredients as human cookies that's fine that's fine that's fine but we live in america the most (laughs) over it's the most over fooded country ever to exist I, if somebody says like, "Here's a Wendy's has a new hamburger and it's huge and delicious for dogs," then I would and I'd be like, "What's on it?" They'd be like, "Meat patty, lettuce, mustard, mayo, bacon, some Swiss, uh, caramelized onions, and a brioche bun." I'm like, "That sounds good. It's for dogs, though." Yeah, it's definitely for dogs. Oh, uh, that's a shame. I'll, I guess I'll just have a spicy chicken boy. It is for it's a spicy chicken boy for dogs. No, this one's see, it's under the human side yeah. of the menu. Well, then I want I, I want that. To Griffin's point, presumably this question actor does know where to get other cookies. Like they yeah. could get other ones for sure. Would you get your dog's dog? I, get, I hear your dog in the background, like, mm, this sounds good as hell. Well, she's now, trying to weigh in. She's yeah. like, wait, hold on. Let me tell you my side of the story. This is actually an interesting thing because I was just thinking, well, just better safe than sorry, give them to the dog. But if they're not made with ingredients dogs can get down on, then that would be bad. But the co- I guess the coworker did say, that the dog would enjoy them. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I got it. I got it. You need to ask your coworker about this with very, or your dad's coworker with very little details. And you're gonna do it like this. You know, my my dog keeps begging for one of those cookies. Is it okay if I give him one? What's in it? That way, you're not saying I think these are dog cookies, and nope. you're not saying I'm eating them. Yeah, you're okay. made a tacit expl. You've made a tacit endorsement of the fact that you have been eating them if you say no 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 it's just there's no reality in which you close a tin and the dog's like hey i remember what's in there no he doesn't (laughs) buzz off you know i have no idea what's in here go away and also travis it also leaves the door open for yes 
these are dog cookies, but you, a human being, can eat them too. And I am saying that that is unacceptable. You just, you should, here's what you should say to these coworker. Straight up, dead ass. Is this for humans or dogs? <laughs> <laughs> And they'd be like, oh, I guess either one could. No, shut the, <laughs> shut your fucking mouth. You tell me which one this is for. <coughs> now. Now. Humans or dogsies? <laughs> now. Well. Oh, my dog, you know, my, when I was making them, my dog jumped up on the counter and ate a cup. Okay, fucking question answered. Don't do this to me again. Don't cook for me again. <laughs> could you, okay, I got a pretty good one. What if you were to ask them for the recipe? And they'll almost <laughs> certainly give you a link, and the link will either go to like four dogs only dot com or four people as well. Dot four dogs only dot com is actually a dating site for dogs only. <laughs> you mm-hmm. don't have to be lonely. Doggies only. Is that a dog voice? That was Scooby Doo. It's their endorser. I do. Oh Scooby-Doo man, you're too. good at all the cartoon voices today. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Is Mel Blank here? I will say one caveat too, because I, I know we're gonna get tweets about it. But sometimes when I smell begging strips, I think, "All right, that's all right. This looks all right." I'll think. I think. I think. You know what? I wouldn't kick it out of bed for being begging strips. Griffin doesn't it, know it's not bacon. Okay, for twenty two ninety five, and I do mean two thousand two hundred ninety five. I can <laughs> buy four dogs only dot com. Oh, that's a lot of juice. I know we have a lot of fun here buying web domains all the all the fucking time, but don't spend that much money on that website. Yeah, you're right. Unless we start making a podcast for dogs. Only. 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 If you help them download it, we'll know. Uh, there will be like a Voight Conf test, but for dogs. Mm-hmm. And it'll be like, hey, click this button. And if they click it, it's like, you failed. You're a human. You're Come on. You're a human. Nice try. Uh, you guys want to go to the money zone? I sure. would love to. Follow me. Okay. Wow. We're here. Wow, it's beautiful. The legends are true. And what's that smell? It's begging strips. I saw it right over that ridge. (laughs) It's the bridge to Terabithia Money Zone. Be careful. (laughs) (laughs) Be careful on that wet bridge. Be careful on that wet bridge. <laughs> That's a pretty bad bridge now that I think about it. I've always romanticized that book and its titular bridge, but fuck that bridge. That's a shitty yeah. bridge. That's it's a, a fucking bridge. awful bridge. Travis, tell me about Blue Apron. Uh, well, you know, I, I will say that Teresa and I, uh, new baby, you know, it's hard to find the time to go out grocery shopping. So it's really nice to know that we have these, like, uh, like fully ready to be made. All the ingredients are right there in one place. Meals from Blue Apron. Blue Apron is a meal subscri- subscription service. Um, they send you everything you need and the quantities you need with the like easy to follow directions right there. So that's the thing is like, I think if everybody like had their druthers, if it was up to them, I think everybody would make these like beautiful meals every night. But, you know, unless you're, like, a trained chef, it's so hard to know, like, what ingredients you'll need when you're at the store. It's so hard to know, like, oh, is that uh, – am I going to need four of those or three of those, like, right off the top of your head without looking up the recipe? Well, Blue Apron takes care of that for you. They send you everything you need, and then you make these amazing, like, delicious and, you know, in many ways good for you. I mean, like, as much as eating a well-balanced meal will do you, um, right to your door. Um, and it's uh, less than $10 per person per meal. You know, it's a different menu every week. And it's like, it's wonderfully amazing, like meals you wouldn't think of making for yourself. Uh, you know, last night we had latkes and uh, beef and like these roasted uh, carrots and beets. It was amazing. It was incredible. So you should check it out. Uh, upcoming meals include like roasted pork and braised cabbage with barley and glazed apples. Thai green coconut curry with sweet potato and jasmine rice. Brown butter and chestnut gnocchi with Brussels sprouts and pea shoot salad. Like, these are incredible meals. You make these meals for somebody, they're going to be like, what? Are you? Did you go to some kind of fancy chef school? And you say, yes, yes, I did. During that summer when you don't know what happened to me, I was at chef school for all you know. 
Um, so you want to go check it out? You can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash mybrother. Um, you love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash mybrother. Travis, it's pronounced right. gen- it's pronounced Genachi. Ah, damn it. Uh, yeah, guess what underwear I'm wearing right now? Oh, right, don't I don't guess. know. That's weird. You creep. Is it the, me like, the, the me like, light green it. with the pink palm fronds? Is it the uh, one with the palm fronds on your butt, on your juicy butt? No, it's the ghost ones from Halloween. Mine's Sorry. sort of like an abstract. It's just like a, it looks like stained. It looks like my uh, penis is stained glass. Mine's Beautiful. the one that looks like the um, the art from the uh, the Nickelodeon News Kid Show. Oh, Nick News. Yeah. Tra- has- Travis just has Linda Ellerby on his right butt cheek. <laughs> These underwear belong in a museum, but you're going to put them on your genitals because that's how you do. And that's how me undies do. They're super comfortable. They cost the price of two cocktails and it's well worth it. You won't even remember the cocktails. You're just going to get, just have a great time, get drunk. That's no good. Save it. Just keep. Just send it back. Send the drink back. Get a refund and buy yourself some new underwear. If you're listening to this episode at a bar right now, stand up, leave, go get some Mondays. Uh, The underwear is made of modal, which is a special fabric with incredible raw materials that are scientifically proven to be three times softer than cotton. They're really comfortable, and they're only sold in MeUndies, where you can get free shipping uh, in the U.S. and Canada. For a limited time, everyone in our audience gets 20% off their first order. But you got to go to this special URL. It's MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. Uh, they have this better day guarantee. You got nothing to lose, so don't wait. Go to MeUndies.com slash MyBrother right now for 20% off your first order. Treat yourself to Treat good, yourself. good underwear. Um, we have got, I'm, um, I'm going to do it. No, All right, you do it. Whoa. Got a message here for Roman Mars. Hey. Uh, Hi, Roman. Uh, Different Roman Mars. Super common name. Oh, shoot. It's from Adam, who says, great job. Keep up the good work. And that's next available. So we did it. Best message ever. Best recipient ever. Good body of the message. Also, Roman has a great great body. Go on. Um, Just a good message. Mm-hmm. No, talk more about Roman Mars's body, please. Talk about the the various curves and angles of talk Roman about his Mars's sinews. Body. He's an extremely I... angular man. Hmm. He's a well built man, and he can so do a cool. podcast episode all about the details that went into building himself. It's really fun. The, I've I've met him in person a couple of times, and the only the only thing about Roman is, and I'm trying to be quiet because I don't want him to hear this part if he's listening. The only thing about Roman is. He starts podcasting a lot of times when you are not ready for him to. You don't know. Like, you're just talking to him about your day, and then you just see a microphone kind of descend from the ceiling that he had rigged earlier. And it's like, hey, Rome. We call him Rome. He insists on it. We're like, hey, Rome. um, Not now. You know? Not, Not right now. I think you'll be like, you'll be like, I wonder why sunflowers look the way you do, look the way they do. And then you look over. Here comes from a microphone from the ceiling. You're like, oh, I'm about to get, yep, I'm about to get invisible. Okay. Here, it's He's going to, the microphone is, uh, to, that's where the name of the show comes from. The microphone is extremely well camouflaged. Mm-hmm. I, but not, I mean, but not, but not, not completely, completely camouflaged. <laughs> not completely. But if you look, you'll see it. But it's, I mean, it's in there. But if you're not paying attention, your eyes will slide right off of it. Slide right past it. Razzle dazzle. Um, I um, want to tell you guys about uh, the uh, Daughter of the Stars by Brenna Campbell on Amazon. Uh, it's a new book. It's actually in my stack of like uh, to read books, which admittedly I'm moving through far too slowly, thanks to New Baby. Um, but Brenna Campbell's first epic fantasy novel, Daughter, Daughter of the Stars, is here. A young sorceress and her anxious werebear boyfriend must embark on a treacherous journey to stop an evil king all while on the run from the monstrous man she's being forced to marry. This book includes centaurs, evil demigods, bulls that can see the future, eels that cause thunderstorms, unicorns, forest lions, and cobras that can change color to mimic anything they see. So check out Daughter of the Stars by Brenna Campbell, B-R-Y-N-N-A Campbell on Amazon. Hopefully the next edition will lose the eels, and then maybe we'll talk. 
listen, it's 10 bucks in paperback, $5 on Kindle. You can't afford not to read this book. I'm Hal Lublin. I'm Danielle Radford. I am Michael Eagle. And we are the hosts of Tights and Fights, Maximum Fun's newest podcast dedicated to all things wrestling. We'll be talking about Sasha Banks, the women's revolution, Sasha Banks, the brand split, and Sasha Banks' wigs. And we'll also be talking about wrestler fashion. Some wrestlers wear too many clothes. Some wrestlers don't wear enough clothes at all. And I'll be doing impressions of all your favorite wrestlers. New episodes Thursdays on Maximum Fun or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, yeah, dig it. Ties and Fights Podcast. Ties and Fights. Um, do you guys want a Yahoo? Yes. Okay, well then, how about this one from uh, Zoe Kinski, riding high? Thank you, Zoe. It's Yahoo Answers user. Sorry, something's gone wrong. We'll call him Brett. Asks, what are some Juggalo prayers? Hmm? What are some Juggalo prayers? What are some Juggalo prayers? No details. No further details. What do you, I mean, what word in this are you having trouble with? Prayer, a cosmic sort of shout to the, to the sky, a plea with celestial, and then Juggalo is, they like that one kind of crazy band. Uh-huh. Like a yeah. lot, so much so that they do all kinds of whack shit. I guess, Griffin, the, the snag for me is why liking ICP would necessitate your own its special own prayers. set, of, its own liturgy. I mean, it requires its own beverage and aesthetic. I don't think this is outrageous. Mm-hmm. Do you, hmm. Hmm. Okay, so here's the question. The, oh, here's the question. Is it prayers related specifically to juggalo-related things or juggalo prayers for everyday things? Hmm. Mm. All, are you praying to God or to the Juggalo band members? Mm -hmm. Or to Hatchet Man? Is or to Hatchet Man, a sort of a symbolic representative of the of the Juggalo band. Like, would you say, Hatchet Man, please help me do good on my bio biology test today? Or would you say, like, dear God, please don't let me get trampled at the ICP show? I mean, um... This, this person delivering a juggalo prayer definitely isn't taking a biology exam. And I don't want to be <laughs> hateful, but. Um, um, I do have some. Oh, good. I found these juggalos for life.com. Now, this site does look unofficial, so I'm not sure that these prayers speak for the entirety of the juggalo family. And I, and I apologize in, in for, for that. Um, here's the first. I pledge allegiance to the hatchet of the mm. underground Juggalo Society. Sort of a parody, sort of like a Weird Al <laughs> parody. <laughs> and to the ninjas for which it stands, one family under clowns, full of freaks, with Fago and Needon for all. I don't know what that What's is. What's that last one? That is, uh, a genital reference. Oh. Second prayer. <laughs> we will never die alone. Juggalos will carry on. Swing our hatchets if we must, each and every one of us. So what if <clears throat> you deliver this Juggalo prayer, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. obviously the Juggalo I shouldn't members, be doing it because I'm not a Juggalo priest. Right. But, it's mm -hmm. not. It's This is, this is we hope we haven't offended any of our Juggalo listeners. Um, but you deliver this, and the members of the ICP, um, Alt, Alt J... Killer Mike, they all hear it and they Inaccurate. they say thank you for these good thank you for these prayers for our band. But then maybe God hears some of it too and he's like <laughs> he's like, Oh, that's a fun that's kind of a new one. God what do you is even sorry. To listen to all prayers? It should be pointed out. So what do you like, hmm? <laughs> we will never die alone. Juggalos will carry on, swing our hatchets if we must, each and every one of us. So like what are you asking for here? Because I'm I'm here to help. Um, I, I you rang? Yeah. Oh no, sorry, God. Um, we're actually Not for good. You. We're good. Oh, this is awkward. I'd, I would like to know what God would make of the fourth prayer, which goes like this: Mass murder makes me happy. Mm. Dead bodies make me happy. Mm. Okay. Say what you will of me, 
I'll always have Juggalo family. And it's the fun, the funnest thing about Juggalos, which I think are amazing and wonderful, uh, broadly speaking, mm. is that like they can turn pretty much anything into a family value. They can like they have co-opted their mass murder and dead bodies as like family that like this is something our family celebrates this may not be for your family but our juggalo family believes that mass murder makes us happy as do dead bodies and that's just our family value let me tell you why this disappoints me i was immediately struck by i believe prayer number two the line swing our hatchets if we must which i appreciated i appreciated the restraint that they were not looking for opportunities to swing their hatchets but they recognized that there would be a time when they must. Um, they I get to prayer ju- number four, and it seems like they that restraint is out the window. I don't understand. Sure, sure. It's different sects. Um, there is, I found another Juggalo prayer, and it says, When I die, show no pity. Send my soul to Juggalo City. Dig my grave six feet deep. Put two matches at my feet. Put two hatchets on my chest and tell my homies I did my best. This one is sweet. This one has like, like this one's kind of sweet because okay. it's like, um, I did my, I did my best. Uh, and it's also asking some stuff. And there's some, there's some actual requests. Ritual. I appreciate Ritual that. is, is, what huge. do you think Juggalo City is? Like, um, Gary, Indiana? It's probably, uh, what's it called? Hole in Rock? Is that the name of where they have the, uh, Juggalo Festival. Mm. Actually, Juggalo City is up in the sky. It's in the clouds. It's in the cloud. It's a floating sky city. The Gathering, right? That's the. It's in. It's, that's the name of the place. Uh, you right? you uh, know a hundred percent more about Juggalos than I do. I promise. I have found Cave more Juggalo Rock. prayers. Cave in Rock, but that was 2007 to 2013. It moved to a place that is literally called Legend Valley, which okay. is so fucking good. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray Shangri-La my soul to keep, but if I'm dead before I wake, I pray to ninjas my axe to take. Pass it on from clown to clown, and I'll have fun from the underground. (laughs) Swinging hatchets now worldwide, hatchets held high. That's Juggalo pride. Okay. The thing Uh, is, when you get a new hatchet that has been passed down to you, you have to memorize the names of uh-huh. all the ninjas <laughs> before you that have wielded that axe, and it can be—I mean, it can be weeks. Mm-hmm. It can be—it can be very, very a long process, but uh, it is—it is essential to have that appreciation. I can't think of anything I love enough that, if given the opportunity to go to like a dope, like. Uh, just like a great sort of fun, fun uh, festival um, where that whole community gets together. Um, I can't think of anything that I love enough that I would be down for that if all 50,000 of those people also had axes. <laughs> I'm a uh, big like... It could be like a Pokemon Carly Rae Jepsen cross fest. Yeah, it's like come, come all play- the attendees had axes and hatchets. Come trade with the queen. She's she's doling out shinies. And I'd be like, that sounds fucking tight. They're like, 50,000 people are going to be there. She's going to be playing nonstop for three straight days. I'm like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Sign me up. Everyone's going to have an axe. And you'll have an axe. Well, that seems dangerous, doesn't it? Like, what if a trade goes wrong? What if, like, she starts playing store and just the party gets way too lit? Um, now they the, don't, but they're not looking for mass murder, right? No, actually, they pray. They prayed mm, for it. Prayed so that's for the it. Only, <laughs> uh, hey, you may yeah. not even. I don't care if you if there if you're at a place. There's fifty thousand small axes. You don't. It doesn't have to be intentional. At least ten people are going to get chopped. I have discovered. Okay. The thirteen Juggalo commandments. This seems like a lot of Juggalo talk, though. Yeah, it seems like we've talked about Juggalos May for about 20 I just minutes. pick three of my favorite? I, how about I your one favorite? I don't want Juggalos to feel like I'm putting them okay, on Okay, we'll start with one. We'll start with one. We'll okay. just do one, all right? This is the first commandment. I should also point out in the top corner of this image uh, is the letters J-N-C-O. So just like, right up there, Jinko. Uh, uh, commandment one. Thou shalt always holla a whoop whoop. To let thy neighbor know you're around. That's Love easy. That. That, that one's That's easy really to good. do. Uh, number no, three. No, we just we said what? one juggalo commandment. Mm, uh, okay, but okay, but 
Okay, but five is thou shalt always keep ye shit wicked and wild. Okay, that's it. Yeah, you got that's two. You got good. double that's the commandments good. we allowed you to say. I want Juggalos to know that this show is a place for them to feel comforted and welcome. Um, they don't even have to hollow a whoop whoop to let us know they're around. They're they're welcome here anytime. I would prefer though that they leave the mass murder mm -hmm. at another podcast. There's probably mm -hmm. other podcasts that would be a little more. Maybe my favorite mass murder. That could be one that they might enjoy that murder side of them over there. And over here, they can just, like, have a good time and enjoy themselves. And yes. The this is more of a – this is, like, the, the come down. This is more of the, like, uh, this is where we come to get away from all the mass murder. I am right now going to change our iTunes description – Oh boy! To the gathering of the Juggalos chill out tent. Oh, let's not do. Don't, 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 no, 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 no. Let's not. No, 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 no. Because I want this to be. No, no, no. I want this to be a safe place for Juggalos. But I think they've done some pretty dubious stuff in the past. That maybe we, maybe we don't want to be their official sort of source. How about instead, Justin? You just our primary category will be comedy. Our second category will be ICP podcast. Let's not. Maybe, 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 maybe not. Maybe we don't do it. Maybe we don't do it. Show me a group that hasn't made some missteps. <laughs> I think they've made some pretty, pretty Show bad missteps that we don't maybe want to. That hasn't had some fringe members get oh, out no. there and getting <laughs> buck wild. Okay, every Does juggalo it... I have ever met has been pleasant, calm, and an average level of interest in mass murder. I yeah. would say like not disinterested, but like a very healthy yeah. amount of interest in mass murder conceptually, I would say. Every group that has murder prayers has some bad apples in it. People take that shit too seriously sometimes. People take that shit too seriously. They get it a little too wicked it's, and wild. The scriptures are open to interpretation. That's why they're <laughs> it's a living document. Violent J didn't mean murder or mass murder, literally. He meant it conceptually, maybe. <laughs> the mass murdering of, like, evil ideas. Evil you know what ideas I mean? Like, ideas or prejudice. Use your hatchet to kill prejudice on a mass basis. Yeah. Every time you see prejudice, hit it with your small axe that you carry around with you because you like this band very much. This is my small axe. I carry it around with me because I like this band very much. The other day, I caught sight of myself drinking a bottle of beer in my reflection and realized for the first time the way I drink looks a lot stranger than I thought. I put my whole mouth over the opening to drink rather than simply bringing the bottle to lips and sipping. Is that weird? Do you see other people <laughs> who drink like that? <laughs> I'm 26 years old, and even though it might look weird, maybe it could be my thing. <laughs> Or is it? Is it? <laughs> Old wide mouth, Greg. Is it too weird to be sustainable, or am I just being paranoid? And it doesn't change, or doesn't matter at all. That's from chillously chugging. <laughs> this is. I don't know why you clowns are laughing. If this is this is a perfectly valid way to consume a bottled beverage. You get excited. You want it in there so fast. You don't want to lose a drop in your in your snot trough. You know what I mean? You Let got a one hundred percent coverage. I'll tell you why it's funny to me. Um, along with the fact that it is a great question, and that is, I I I, I have had many friends over the years, especially during college, that were constantly in in search of like what their thing was. And I love the idea of the way you put your mouth on a beer bottle is your thing. That's like what you're known as. Oh, man, I love having that dude at parties. <laughs> the way he puts his mouth on that bottle, it's awesome. So good. I, lo I lose it every time. Because it's both funny and innovative. <laughs> and it's I don't so know. real. I see people chugging and drinking like real fast. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how these people are doing it. I just don't get it. I watch, I watch, you see in movies and it's like, here's a cool guy. Look at how fast he drinks a beer. Um, and it's like, I don't know. I, I can't drink any fluid that fast. I don't know how these people are doing it. Maybe I do the full coverage of the bottle. I don't know. Now I'm fucking paranoid about my own technique. I actually don't think you could chug a beer bottle in the method that this person is describing because I feel like they, fit the physics would get in your way like you couldn't replace mm -hmm. the beer with air and you'd have a vacuum and wouldn't be able to continue drinking it 
You just have to poke a hole in the bottom of the bottle. Okay. That's commitment. Yeah. You're going to need a really hot nail and patience. Do you guys drink beer bottles like this? It's been a long time since I drank a beer bottle. I'm mm, I always, I choose to decant. <laughs> Um, um, no, I really do choose to decant. I, I mean, I don't know what's in the bottom of that fucking Coors. Could be some uh, sediment in there. I don't, I'm not interested in it. Teresa gives me a hard time because I never finished the last quarter inch of any bottled beer ever. Because I just mm. assume that there's some like, you know, a, from like home brewing and craft brewing, you do end up with stuff down there. Like, I'm not, I'm not making that up. But I doubt that that's true of like a Miller High Life. You know what I mean? That's why I drink it. I don't want to fuck with. I don't want to have to strain my shit through cheesecloth before I drink it. I just want to get fucked up in this pool, this community pool that I'm gonna get kicked out of with your a, Bud Light hour. limes. With my Bud Light limes that are half backwash when you buy them, and that is a <laughs> convenience because then you can just throw them away when they get warm. Speaking of somebody who you guys lived with for a month, you also uh, both don't finish the second um, half of any of your sodas ever. You it's just so leave much. them. Twelve lying ounces around. is so much. Give it to me in the Japanese style. <laughs> mm-hmm. Give me a tiny. Give me a tiny, discreet six ouncer, and I'll slam it. And that's right in front of the because, convenience like, That's store. all the soda you need, and it also makes you feel like a giant. I love it. You I don't want to drink. Here's a 29 ounce Coke Zero. It's like that's gonna take me a, a whole week to finish that. What a Give chore! Me. Give me a little, a, a little ball of it. The, how dope would it be? You remember those balls of apple juice they had on Boy Meets World? I want to drink every beverage out of that. It's the perfect amount of fluid, and I could chug that probably pretty good, and I would look cool doing it. It's not that I mind the cost of the wasted sodas; it's just the inconvenience. <laughs> And, I mean, cleaning. Well, them up that's why you got it. You got to start more. composting those. Um, that doesn't make sense. Well, you let them ferment and then they become like you know soda beer. Worms eat them mm-hmm. and then they turn into biofuels. Look uh, it up. There's a lot of science on it. I'll share. With there's you. a lot of science on the sci- Christian Science Monitor website, folks. That's gonna do it for us. Thank you so much for enjoying our program with us. Uh. I this this is not a plug so much as just as to say we're two months out now approximately from uh, the My Brother My Brother Me TV show on CISO and we've seen all the episodes now I think I think you all are really gonna like it I hope you're looking forward to it because I think you're gonna really enjoy it and I we've just started to, say to get that. we've started to get trailers for it and it's crazy that we made a thing that has a trailer. I know that's weird to say, but like that was the that's a very recent thing that kind of stuck out to me. Like, oh, this thing has a a trailer. That's that's something. And I know I I know that a lot of people are listening to this and they are not in America. And right now, CISO is not available outside of America. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's a thing that, you know, they know about, they're aware of. And we know that that's a bummer. But the good news is at least one episode will be available on YouTube for everybody. So everybody will get to see at least one episode um but we and really ju- think you're gonna dig it and we won't have a lot of say in this stuff like if you are in another country and you want CISO like the, honestly the best thing you could do is just let them know um and I'm not saying like launch a big you know social media campaign or whatever but like if you all would like to see it and you can't let them know just so they know that there's you know there's a demand there and they know how to prioritize that stuff I guess I maybe that would help I don't run a streaming yeah. TV service, so this I'm is, kind of talking out of my ass here. This is it. Like, just what to, I can tell you is we cannot help. <laughs> like, yeah, I that's the thing. Sure is, unlike everything for the it. last six years, we have very little control over it at this point. Yeah. Um, um, but, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use for our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a fucking great album. Great holidays gift. Uh, John Roderick also made a Christmas album with Jonathan Colton uh, called... Uh, one Christmas oh, at a time. You want Christmas at a time? It's really, really good. I don't even know if you can still get it, but if you can, another great holiday it gift, is. great music. I, you shouldn't get it this way unless you can't buy it, but it is on Spotify, so you could oh, check it out okay. there. Um, awesome. Uh, quick updates. Uh, MBMBM Angels hit a hundred percent. You done did it again. You're all incredible. Um, I I am supremely touched by that. Um, yeah, you're wonderful. 
And the world builders, I think uh, when this comes out, there will be two days left on it. This is Patrick Rothfuss's um, charity that goes to benefit Heifer International. Um, our updated goal was 2500 and we've already raised for the My Brother, My Brother and Me team $3,500. Um, so, mm-hmm. And I think they're well over $2 million, uh, for the charity overall. So there's still some time left to donate when you hear this. And you can go to bit.ly forward slash MBMBAMWB. Um, two more quick things. If you're going to be at San Francisco Sketchfest this year, the first weekend, uh, the 12, 13, 14, that, that weekend in January, um, I am going to be there. Uh, I'm going on Joseph Scrimshaw's show, Obsessed, uh, Saturday afternoon at 4.30, I think. And I'm doing uh, Jordan, Jesse Go Saturday afternoon at 1. Uh, so if you want to come out and see those, you totally should. Otherwise, I'll just be hanging out seeing shows myself. Um, um, what else? Any, anything else? Should we thank Max Fun? Thank you, Max Fun. Check out all the other shows on MaximumFun.org. Uh, go to McElroyShows.com to check out all the other projects that we do. Uh, oh, get in, your, can- get in your Candle Nights questions because that's the next step. Yeah. Um, are we going to try to do that early? Do we know? I think maybe uh, folks, you know, they usually after after Christmas Day, there's such a come down. What if we were there waiting for him on the 26th? I mean, it's fine by me. I just don't know when we'll do it. We'll figure it out. Okay, that's coming up. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Justin, right. are, you, are you okay? Yeah, I uh, I was looking to see. Uh, here's here's actually what was happening. I was looking at our team on World Builders, and I was trying to figure out some teams that we can make fun of that we're beating. But I thought that that's probably not in the spirit of charity. And then there are other teams, many teams that are beating us, and I don't want us a bit to be a thing. So that's what that's the mental math that I've been running in my mm-hmm. head. So that makes sense. That all tracks. Yeah. God, that we're tracks. so good at being philanthropists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I mean, it's just like, it, I can't take any credit for it, so bragging about it seems weird. Or maybe that's Fair. like a good time for bragging. I don't actually, kn- you know what I mean? Because it's like boasting for people you care about. And I think that mm. that's really nice. Like, really nice of me. I mean, I do um, still want to kick everybody's ass. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do want to kick everybody's That would be ass. nice. Anyway, uh, uh, that's good. We're done. Yeah, final Yahoo. This one was sent in by Level 9000. Yeah, Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's Yahoo yeah, Answers user. Chaz Van Blom who asks, where can I find a free JPEG image of Tim Allen dressed as Santa Claus? (laughs) Free, free, mind you. (laughs) My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I paid 20 damn dollars for this Tim Allen JPEG. Damn it. It is glossy, I'm Travis McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. May kiss your dad square on the lips. What do Maria Bamford, Jad Abumrad, Dick Cavett, Phoebe Robinson, Dan Deacon, W. Kamau Bell, Brooke Gladstone, and Andrew W.K. have in common? They've all been speakers and performers at past Max Fun Cons. Every Max Fun Con is a murderer's row of amazing stand-up comedians, thoughtful cultural leaders, and skilled artists. And Max Fun Con and Max Fun Con East 2017 will be no different. Visit MaxFunCon.com for dates and more information and to grab your ticket before they're gone. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.